Hey, this is Kev with Blender Binge. I just got asked by a subscriber to do a video on making wires, and I thought that this would be a really cool idea to do, being that I have an industrial background, and I've been doing this kind of thing for a while. And it's this good for beginners to watch how I go and do this stuff and maybe pick something up and you know maybe intermediate users can get something out of this too but this is going to be a longer one um, it's, it's really not meant to game the YouTube algorithm it's more just meant to teach so have at it and I'm going to go so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go add I'm going to go mesh and I'm going to go cylinder and I just want to make a low poly wire one wire so I can take this little pad over here and I can say vertices and I can say eight. And then radius here, I'm gonna go 0.1. And depth here, I can say eight. And that just gives me this nice wire. And then over here on the Z location, I could say four, hit enter, and now it's on the floor. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I like that. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and subdivide this. So to do that, I'm gonna hit select it, I'm gonna hit tab to go to edit mode. And I'm gonna to need to slice this up so that we can wrap this around each other. So we're gonna make four of these and wrap them around each other. So to do that, I'm gonna hit Control R on the keyboard, and I'm gonna scroll up with my mouse wheel until I get something like about there. That's probably good, okay? And then I can just click twice, hit Tab, and you're done. Okay, you can get that also by just going Add, and um, when you're in edit mode here, you can just go Edges, and then subdivide, or you could do edge slide or edge split. Okay, there's a number of different ways. That's one of the faster ways that I found to do it. So what we'll do now is I'm gonna duplicate these and I'm gonna wrap them around each other. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to an orthographic view on the Z. Okay, I wanna to look top down. I'll zoom in over here. And what I can do is I can take this guy, hit G, move him over here, all right, and this doesn't have to be perfect right now, and I'm not going to use the mirror modifier and all that. That's just too crazy right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit Shift-D, pull this guy over, then hold down Shift, select him, hit Shift-D again, move him down, and I'm still on the G key here, so I'm still moving around. And now I have four of these. So what I need to do now is select all four of them, okay? And I'm going to hit Object, Join. That joins them all together. And then all I have to do is make sure that the, the rotation and the pivot all happens from the dead center of this object, or this bend twisty thing isn't going to work. So I'm going to go Object, Apply, All Transforms. And that now snaps. You can see if I hit the Move tool, it's, it's kind of like right dead center. That's where I want this. So what I'll do with this is I'm just going to go to Modifier, Add Modifier. I'm going to say Simple Deform. And you get this, okay? That's that's crap. You you don't you don't want that. So you just change axis over here to Z, and now you get this kind of nice twisty thing happening, right? So if I go in here and I start twisting, look at that. Ooh, look at that. And it it stops at 360, but you can go and type like 720 in there and get a nicer kind of pretzel braid thing. And we like that. That's what I want. Perfect. Okay. So then what I can do is if I like it. All right, I'm gonna use a destructive workflow here because it just kind of works for this. I'm just gonna hit apply and I'll leave it at that because we're gonna do some other operations. So I wanna kind of freeze this one. So that's great. So what I can do now is I can start kind of like making these wires kind of fan out. So what I'll do is I'll just go select one of these faces. So to do that, I hit tab to go to edit mode. I'm just gonna go up here to my uh, faces. I'm gonna select one of these faces and I don't need this to be perfect, so I'm just kind of line it up like this, maybe like over here. And then I can go over here to this like edge extrude thing, and I'm going to go extrude to cursor, okay, this little edge tool thingy here. And I say extrude to cursor, and now I can just kind of go do this, do this a couple times, and just kind of get a bendy wire going. And I can do that for the other ones, but just be careful because if you click here, it's going to like deform to here, it's going to like do an ex other extrusion, so you just want to like like just hit the move tool, select another one, then go back here and do this, okay? As you work in Blender, there, there are like faster ways to do this stuff, but this is geared toward beginners and I really don't want to confuse you, so here we go. So I'm gonna do that again, go over here, okay? Do this, wonderful, look at that. That's just, that's getting there, I, I'm, I'm digging that, okay? So then I'm gonna go here and I'll just do one more, right? Why not, one more. 
One more. One more happy little liar. You know, Bob Rossett. Okay, so there we go. Great. That works for me. Looks decent. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the braid. Now this is a really cool trick that uh, I picked up somewhere on um, Blender Stack Exchange or something. I, I, I would, if I could find it again, I'd totally give credit to the original author, but I, it was so long ago that I saw this. So if I hit tab, okay, and I go back to object mode, and I go to add, and I'll do mesh, and I'll do another one of these cylinders, okay, it, it remembered what I did last time. So for vertices, I'm going to want to say like 32. Radius, I want like 0.2, maybe even a little bit more, maybe like 0.4. And depth, I think I only need like two on the depth. That's probably pretty good. Okay, so I have this now. I can kind of move it up here to where this uh, the, the braided part is going to be. I can hit S and scale it down a little bit. I don't need it to be that wide. And here's where the cool like, little trick thing happens. I'm going to subdivide this thing. So I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to hit control R to get into that edge mode, edge loop thingy. And I'm going to use my scroll wheel and I'm going to get to about something kind of square. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to stretch this out anyway, but square is good. Hit your mouse two times and that's wonderful. So I can go up here now to faces. I can hit A on the keyboard to select all. And uh, actually, you know what? The first thing I'll do is I'll get it, get rid of these top faces. So check this out, right? I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to hit delete faces. Yes. I'm going to move down here, select him, delete faces. So now what I'll do is I can select all of these guys by hitting A on the keyboard. And I'm going to go to edge. I'm going to say unsubdivide. And iterations here, I'm going to say two. And that gives us this nice pattern, right? That's pretty cool. That's the braided pattern. They're kind of like doing this whole braid thing. So what we'll do with this is we're just going to go, while this is all selected, I'm going to go to inset faces and I'm going to click and drag my mouse. And I get this, once I let go, I get this little panel that comes up. So I just want to select individual. Okay. Thickness. I want to pull down a bit. And about that is probably pretty good right there. And now just hit delete, faces, gone. And then what I'll do is I'll hit tab and go back out. And it doesn't really look like the braiding yet, but it will in a minute. So what I'll do is I'll just go to object, shade smooth. And then I'm going to add some, uh, some thickness to this by just going to this modifier over here. I'm going to go to solidify and I'm just going to add a little bit more thickness to this and that's probably pretty good and that starts fooling the eye a little bit so not perfect okay if you really want these to overlap each other you kind of got to model that or just go ahead and move these points around but for now and, and at the distance I'm going to render this it's probably pretty good so I like that I'm going to commit to it I'm going to hit uh, let me see here wait I could say even thickness let's see what I can do with any of these things only rim. Eh, I, I kind of like that. I think I'll go with that and I'll hit apply. And then while I'm here, I think I'll also give it a bevel. Okay, just so it solidifies a little bit more. That's good. I'll just commit to it, hit apply. That's fine. And now what I can do is I can stretch this out just a little bit more like that. And now it kind of looks like that braided pattern. And I can scale it down to fit the wires. Uh, and that's probably pretty decent. Okay, great. So now what I can do too is I can go ahead and make the actual cable. So to do that, <laughs> you probably guessed what I was going to do. I'm going to create another one of these cylinders. Okay, this time I don't need 32, so I'll just say 8 again. I don't need it to be that big. Uh, radius 0.4, that looks pretty good. Maybe 0.5, so it's slightly more round than this thing. Depth, I'll just say 8 again. And uh, oh yeah, it's totally too wide. So I'll bring that back down. And that's good. So I can click off of that. I can move this up to about there. And that's, uh, yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Great. Wonderful. Look at that. Perfect. Now it looks like a pencil, which is not what we want. So what we can do here is we can add a subdivision surface to this. And oh no, we get this round crap, right? Look at that. Well, all I have to do for that is just hit tab 
Control R, and we can drag a face up here, an edge I mean, hit Control R again, drag an edge down to the bottom, and that's great. We can also go and we can sharpen these edges, but for now I'm just going to do it this way. It's, it's fine, it works, I'm happy with it. And uh, yeah. So now viewport, I could turn that up and it's looking a little bit better. And now we just scale it up a little bit. And there we go. It looks like I have to add another one of these in. So control R, drag this up. There we go. And you kind of, I kind of like this cause it gives me like that little rounded edge here that the light's going to catch and it's going to look a little bit better. See that like the light's catching it and it looks more like wire-y, wire, wire-ish. And so I'm going to do that again here on the bottom and I just bring it down. That's fine. I mean, we're not going to concern ourselves with the bottom, but whatever. So great. Look at that. Oh, that's cool. Hey, nice. Pull that down a little bit. Yeah, that's looking cool. So what we can do now is we can start adding some other stuff to it. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'll pause the video, save it and come back. Great. So now what can, what can we do with this? Well, I have this object and this object and this object and they're all looking pretty cool. So now I think I can go ahead and start playing with this and adding that foil in here. And that might look pretty cool too. So what I'll do with this is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go give it a subdivision surface modifier and immediately these things are going to round out. Don't worry about that. And I can go object shade smooth and now they look a little more like noodles or spaghetti or pasta or something or, or, or wires. So what I'll do here is I can go ahead and start adding where the foil is going to go on these. So if I hit tab, right, I can kind of interactively model with this and I kind of like doing it this way anyway. So I'll hit control R. Okay, bring one of these up and then I can scale this out and kind of pull this up and then I can, if I hit like space bar and, and, uh, or shift and then space bar, I can hit the move tool here and this is going to be kind of messy. So we don't have to be like perfect with this, but we just kind of want to bring this up and around. And if you hit the period on the numeric keypad, that'll focus and then you can kind of like rotate the, the, the view around that. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead, scale this up a bit, pull it up, and that's cool. And then what I can do is I can control R, add another one of these in. Now there are ways to sharpen this, um, but like I said, I'm just going to give you a very basic way to do this because it works and that's fine, but I'll, I'll show you sharpening too in a bit. So here, I just do this again, okay, pull this up. Okay, pull another one of these down. And this kind of gives that lip for where the foil is going to go. Okay, over here, like you don't have to do it like the same spot either. You can kind of make it messy. So you can like add one here and then add one here and then scale this up by hitting S and then move that up. Okay, cool. Control R, move that down. Control R, another one of these. Okay, and you're getting like this uh, this covering foil over here, and then like here we could do like one up here if you want, right? So there, there, shift S, and don't worry if it like crosses in, like it's not going to really matter if it's like really intersecting, like you can fix that later if you want. But right now we're just concerned about getting this thing going here. So that's cool, right? So now we have these, uh, the kind of where the foil is going to go and we have the wires and i'm not going to worry that this is rounded yet uh, we're going to get that in a little bit so here being that this is all subdivided now i can kind of scale this down and make it so it like fits a little bit better i can take this here i can scale this down a bit all right that's that's probably cool and then you can move this up all right so that's looking good and then we can start shading it. Maybe, you know what, maybe first I'm going to make the wires. So I'll make these tops first while I'm here. All right. So I'll select a face. I'll select this face and you can probably guess what we're going to do here. I'm going to change extrude to extrude individual. Okay, click and drag. 
you can do it again, click and drag, hit S for scale. All right, scale that down a little bit. Maybe pull it inside a little bit. And you want to extrude another one. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say extrude along normal, which is the, the, the face here. And that's going to pull it out this way, kind of like the direction that it's facing. And then you can like do another one here and kind of cap it off. And you can do that trick with the control R and bring it down. And now it looks like you have like a wire coming out of here. And if it doesn't look good, we'll change it later. But right now I just want wires sticking out. So what I'll do here is I'll go here back here to face, do this again. Okay. Extrude. And you could like do extrude along normal. That's fine. And then click it again, hit S, scale it down a little bit. And then click that again and pull it out. Click one more time and it just kind of caps it off and we can, we can sharpen it. We'll sharpen it in a bit too. So anyway, and so I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to do the same thing on these two. You don't need to watch that. And then I'll come back when we have it all done. Okay. So here I have these wires extruded and I can go ahead and make them smaller and sharper if I want to. So I can go here to faces and I can hit this little ghosting thing over here, this toggle x-ray. And now I can see all the dots and my, and my polygons. So I can hit B, click and drag, select, and then I can just hit like S, scale it. And then uh, if I just kind of move my mouse here, you don't have to be perfect here. Okay. And just kind of like move it in. Okay. You can do that. You can hit B. You can grab these guys. Hit G. You can move these out a little more. You can hit R and kind of rotate them around and just kind of mess it up. And uh, I can do that for a couple of these now. So I'll just hit B. Go here. Rotate around a little bit. Nah, I don't want to rotate that. I'm just going to scale it down. All right. Push it in. All right. And I'll pause the video and then I'll just mess the rest up and then we will, uh, we'll, we'll continue on. So like for here, you can see here, you have this little thing happening here. So just hit control R, bring that back or I'll sharpen it in a bit too. Okay. So I've gone ahead and I've, I've uh, went in and, and, uh, changed this around a little bit. So now what I can do is I can just sharpen the edges. So I showed you, I told you how I'd sharpen the edges here. So if you want, you can like take these and make them sharper by simply going to edges, holding down alt and clicking on one of the edges, holding on alt, clicking another one. All right, let's turn off ghosting x right here and now we can do this and it gets the whole thing by holding down alt and what you can do is you can go over here to and you go to item okay where it says item up here and you can say mean crease and you can crease that in because this is how you crease it do it again over here like you can just go here hit alt okay select the whole edge ring and then you go here to item and mean crease and you can just crease it up so that's another way of doing it besides just hitting, uh, you know, adding more edge loops, which edge loops just adds more geometry, which isn't always a good thing. So like here, right? If I, let me see, I go on to X right here and I select this. Okay. I select that edge ring. Now watch if I turn off X-ray and you can see this, if I turn on mean crease, that just does that. It creases it without adding more geometry. So it's just another way to go ahead and do it. Depending, you know, it just depends on your end result and what you want and how you want to model. Um, you'll hear a lot of people say, you know, don't do this, don't do that. Like, yeah, there are some things that you, you don't want to do, but there's others that, you know, just pick and choose your battles when you're doing this stuff. And if it works, it works. If it looks good, it looks good. If it renders fast, it renders fast. You'll, you'll get the hang of it when you're doing this. So now what I can do is I can start shading. So I'm going to hit tab, and we can just start shading this thing. So to do that, I'm going to go over to shading and I can start giving my thing a shader. So now I, these are still all separate pieces, which is great. So I can go ahead and I can just hit new principled shader. That's wonderful. I'll change this to like black and I'll call this material 001. I'll call this, um, main, main cable. I'll go up to this. I'll call this 
braiding, bra braiding. I'll make this metallic while I'm here. I'll go over to these guys and I'll just make the whole thing and I'll call this foil for now. And I'll give it a foil color so it'll be metallic. I'll turn the roughness down, make it kind of foily. And that's cool. And um, now I can just go ahead and start playing around with these things, right? So I can go in here, I can hit tab, and I can select, like, let me see, I can select like one of these faces, right? So if I hit this face, here's a, a cool way to do this. I can hold down control and then plus on the numeric keypad, and it starts to highlight everything, and I'll just go down to about where the foil starts, and I can just give this another shader. So I'm just gonna do a material over here, material properties, and I'm gonna hit new, and then I'll hit new, and I'm gonna hit assign. And that's just gonna assign this a whole new shader. So I'm gonna call this wire 01. And I'll make this one like red. And don't worry about this, we're gonna fix this later doing the same thing. So again, I'm gonna select this, I'm gonna hit control plus a few times until it goes down to about where the foil starts. Same thing, I'm gonna hit new, new, assign, make this one green, call this wire. Okay, so in the essence of time, I went through and I did the same thing on the other ones and I gave them different wire names. And then I went ahead and I selected these guys and I called them inner wires and I just gave them another shader. And that's just, I just bumped up the metallic all the way and roughness kind of down and it, they look like wiry kind of like this but we're going to make this look better now so what i'm going to go ahead and do now is i'm going to start breaking up the roughness so i'm going to start with the foil and kind of make it look more like foil right because right now it just kind of looks like metal so what we'll do is i'm going to select foil and i'm going to come down here and i'm going to hit shift a and i'm going to say noise texture i'm going to hit shift a i'm going to go to vector i'm going to say bump I'm going to take normal, plug that into normal. I'm going to go to factor here, plug that into height. And now what I can do is if I have Node Wrangler installed, which I do, right? It's an add-on. You should just enable Node Wrangler. I'm going to hit this. I'm going to hit control T. And this gives us a mapping, which I like. And now what I can do here is I can play with the scale. And then I can play with the strength too, like two. And that kind of starts making this foilish, like a foil e. Right? So you just play with the distortion a little bit. Okay, not too much. And you know, just find where it looks like foil to you. And that's probably that's probably pretty decent right there. And so what I can do now is I can take the same thing and add it to this and then just change this a little bit. So I'm gonna take foil, I'm gonna go here, say copy material. I'm gonna go here to where I said braiding, okay, which I just put braiding on here. And I'm just going to say paste material, same thing. And now I'll just change this just a little bit. So I'll say base color, just pull it down a little bit. And it just, now ultimately this, this, this braiding stuff is not, it's, it's like wires and crisscrossing, but from a distance, it's going to look decent from, from over here. If you really, really concerned, you can go ahead here and paint out texture maps and kind of bump it out, but that's, that's probably fine from this distance. So now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, I can say, same thing for this, I can take foil, I can copy that material, I can go to inner wires that I named these, and I can just hit paste material, and that from this distance looks okay. Um, although, I think what I'll do for this is I'll, uh, I'll scale this down just a little bit here, and then I can take the base color down a little bit, and that'll, that'll be kind of passable from this distance depending on on how close you want to get and lastly here i can just break up the i can break up the specular on these things so for that i can just go here to wire and watch this so the roughness here you want to break up it'll just make it look a little bit better so i'll hit shift a and i'm just going to go choose texture and for this i'll say musgrave i'm going to take the factor of musgrave just for right now and plug it into roughness and you'll see it starts like kind of giving you little smudges. And then again, with this uh, Node Wrangler installed, I hit Control T, and there we go. 
and now it's like generated so it's going to map it pretty nicely over this thing and now what i can do is i can play with the scale here and what it does is light white is rough and black is like mirror so i can go ahead and control this more by going converter color ramp throw that in here and i can take this black here and i can kind of move it up and then if i keep adding this you see it's like smudging pretty decently and all i'm looking to do is kind of break up that reflection a bit and at a distance here it's going to start looking a lot better see that so it looks kind of smudgy and rough and you can add scratches and bumps to it too but the, i i want this video to end at some point so i'm gonna i'm gonna not do that but you can go ahead and same way we did the foil you can add bumps to this and just kind of like slight bump on this but that's that's up to you so what you can do here is you can take this hit control c so just hit control c control v color to color All right you can just copy this go back here control v color to roughness because it's just black and white so it's fine here control v color to roughness and uh, you probably do the same thing for this guy down here so you just go to main cable control v color to roughness and the scale is going to be a little bit different here so you probably want to um probably want to take the scale down a bit i don't know find something that makes you makes you happy and uh now all we can do is we can bend it, make it a little more interesting. So to do that, all I have to do is just hit B, select it all, object, join. Ooh, it's already joined. Uh, and all I have to do here is go to modifier properties, add modifier, go to simple deform, turn on bend, and there it is. It is bent. And now I'm just going to go ahead with my camera and find a, a, a decent view, right? So something like, I don't know, like right there is probably pretty decent. And then I'm just going to light it. Okay, I'm going to turn on cycles. It's on. Device, I'll say GPU. Eh, I don't know, CPU. CPU is fine. And what I'll do here is I'm going to go to shading and I'm going to go to world and I'm going to call in an HDR map to light this and I'll put a link in the description to where I got it. I got it at HDRI Haven, really awesome site. And so I'm just going to go to texture. I'm going to say environment texture, plug that in color to color, choose machine shop. That's the one I got. Go to the render tab. And there we go. It's all right. And it's looking decent. So lastly, what you can do is you can go to camera. And uh, eh, that's fine. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to do depth of field or anything because it's not gonna blur the background anyway. But um, if you want to render this out and you don't want the backdrop in there, you just want the lighting information. Uh, you, you just want to kind of put this over something or into a presentation or whatever. That's whatever you want to do. You could just go. You just go to render film and just say transparent and now when you render it it'll render like this so let's go this render render image and see what we got all right so not bad not a bad start i mean you can always add scratches and bumps uh you can you can definitely make this look better like it actually is coming out of here so you want to move this over and just kind of do some stuff with this maybe over here too um, maybe darken this a little bit uh, but there, there's you know it's a good start and it's getting you pretty close to the, to the final result. So without making this video super long, hope you got something out of it. If you did, hit like, subscribe, share it, whatever. Um, shout it from the rooftops. Go make wires um, and have fun. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.